Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be discussing Govind Sadashiv Guri, one of the important Indologists who study Indian society in a very detailed manner. We have already discussed Indological perspective as well as Louise Dumont in the previous class. Uh, kindly go through it if you have any query regarding those topic. So let's get started. G.S. Guri or Govind Sadasiv Guri was the father of Indian sociology. This particular uh, question is a very, very favorite part of the question setters. So this used to come in various examination. So if we divide his works, uh, his works are classified into caste, tribe, kinship, family, marriage, culture, civilization and religion too. Even his uh, work, social tension in India, wither India, India recreates democracy can be regarded as triology of Gure's work. So he is one of the Indian sociologists who had a tremendous knowledge of socio-cultural life of Indian society. His writings, uh, like I have said already, apart from this, there are Indian sadhus, family and kinship in Indo-European culture, etc. So here we would only uh, discuss few of his work, right? So if we look at his uh, writings, he is basically influenced by Sir Herbert Riesley, who said caste is a product of race and it comes to India with the Aryans. He even said caste has gone through various process in Indian history. So here we would be analyzing the caste, right? So if you look at the caste system, he had uh, introduced six features of the system so let's understand one by one the first one is segmental division segment is actually means compartment so if you divide the population into different groups on the basis of uh, social status we'd find there are two types of status first one is ascribed status and the other one is achieved status now the question comes what is ascribed status Ascribed status is nothing but it is a status which is based on our birthright, which is fixed and cannot be changed. Whereas a chief status is occupied by a person through his talent. So we can say all the members of different groups are assigned with some roles and they have to perform those in an efficient way. Uh, for instance, uh, if you take segments brahmins uh, kshatriyas vaishyas and sutras they are some of the segments of the society and everyone has a distinctive role to perform right next come hierarchy what is hierarchy hierarchy means society is pyramidical in structure and it is based on the principles of purity and pollution we have already discussed uh, the concept of purity and pollution in louis dumont class kindly go through it <coughs> so um, uh, so actually the principle of purity and pollution determines the position of segment that is the social group in the hierarchy later let it be more clear suppose in which caste of what position would be determined by this two principle only according to Guri hierarchy determines caste norms and it is based on division of labor right for example uh, if we uh, divide the activities on uh, religious ground and governance or maintenance then we'd find that religious activities would be at the highest position that is in the top of the ladder right that definitely the brahmins would come similarly the segments would be a place vertically under one another so this is about hierarchy next come lack of choice of occupation so this mainly shows the rigidity in caste system according to Guri 
Hindu social life was observed through different disabilities and privileges. But these disabilities were not common everywhere. It has lots of variation. You can say the higher caste enjoyed the privileges and the lower caste enjoyed the so-called unequal in nature, you can say. Next come privilege of prohibition. What does this actually mean? We can uh, see this through occupation. As we know, occupation are fixed in hierarchy and we are not allowed to change. They are not allowed to change uh, their traditional occupation. Right? They have to be stick with those occupation. For example, Brahmins have to undergo uh, different activities uh, based on religion only. Right? Next one is commensality. You know, some there are some rules that are imposed on caste, uh, different caste group, such as restriction on feeding, uh, which means higher caste people do not take food from the lower caste and so on. Right. Next, it's based on restriction on marriage. Here we uh, find two principles, that is endogamy and exogamy. Endogamy is nothing but it's a rule of marriage where one have to marry within the caste group whereas exogamy is actually have to marry outside the caste group, right? So this is about restriction on marriage. So he also talked on tribe. So let's understand what he talked about tribe. This is also one of the favorite question of the antenate examination that is who are the backward Hindus answer would be tribes so according to Guri uh, he do not agreed with Elvin who said tribes should live in isolation so according to him tribes were Hinduized and they were assimilated in the Hindus right so he even talked uh, on kinship family and marriage here we'd find the three principles that we have already discussed that is endogamy the marry within the caste group exogamy outside the clan or you can say gotra and third one is hypergamy hypergamy is nothing but it's also an restriction on marriage where the upper caste uh, man cannot marry the lower caste women right next uh, he talked about something on culture and civilization here we find the word uh, urbanization Urbanization is actually urban plus growth, that is greenery. Uh, you can say we need growth of culture independently and through diffusion. So people should preserve their own old culture while creating a new spirit of new culture. Means we need uh, the new culture definitely, but we should also take some best out of the old culture too in order to have a good life right next he also talk about uh, something on religion where he said uh, religion is a center of total heritage of man he even wrote six books on religion such as indian sadhus goods and men religious consciousness conscience sorry indian accumulation vedic india the legacy of ramayana so here are the few books on religion he also said sadhus has nature of renunciation means they are at the top of the system right so these are some of the few works uh, of uh, gure apart from this he also talked uh, about the brahminical and devere where the brahmin culture had a very important role in indian society uh, and so on so these are some of the few works that he have uh, given to uh, the society right so this is about Gobind Sadasiv Guri if you have any query or any questions please post a comment uh, and uh, that's all for today thank you have a great day